EM 385 1 1, Section 30, Diving Operations, Revision, July 2014. Note this is abbreviated training intended to provide a subject overview and familiarize managers and administrators with recurring or repetitive dive operations. This is not intended to qualify students for the roles of designated diving coordinator, alternate dive coordinator, dive safety representative, dive inspector, etc. Section 30 coverage. Section 30A, 30A.1 through 6, 30A.7 through 9, 30A12, 30A13, that's 30C with minimal coverage, 30D with minimal coverage, 30G with minimal coverage, Appendix G, manning levels for dive teams with minimal coverage. This slide shows topics not covered by this presentation or sections that are minimally covered. While we have your attention, for low-risk dives, if the dive team is qualified with certifications and dive logs, if the dive team is current on their first aid, CPR, O2 administration, and dive medicals, and if their manning meets Appendix G, if the team is properly equipped with maintenance records, tank certifications, and air certifications, and if the team has an accepted safe practices manual, and if the team has an easily editable template for a dive operations plan, the AHA to cover all aspects of the job, emergency management plan, the dive personnel qualifications, and with adequate attention to the specific job, then the EM385 pre-dive approval process can go quickly, smoothly, and the on-site work should be on track. In general, diving operations shall be performed in accordance with EM3511. Failure is cause for rejection or cessation of diving operations. Waivers from the EM385 or variances are permitted. In the previous version of the EM385, enforcement of more conservative diving requirements was allowed. However, this has been removed from the current revision. Doing so will help to standardize the requirements globally, allowing for contractors and dive teams to better anticipate their on-site requirements. Diving shall not be used as a work method if the work objective can be more safely and efficiently accomplished by other means, including but not limited to using remotely operated vehicles and or camera systems, or by dewatering the work area so work may be accomplished in the dry. Putting personnel in the water is a last resort as far as feasibility or if the other methods create a hazardous situation. Surface applied air, or SSA, shall be used whenever possible in accordance with practical constraints. There are times and places to use scuba. Consider options on a case-by-case -case basis with proper ORM and refer to EM 3530C prior to the need. Lifeboating shall not be used without prior specific acceptance by the DDC. Training. Accepted training providers include commercial diving schools, military schools, federal schools, Association of Commercial Diving Educators accredited schools, in-house training programs meeting the requirements of ANSI, ACDE, and ADCI consensus standards are acceptable. Training for scientific divers using compressed air must comply with 29 CFR 1910-410, must meet the above requirements, or 
the Standards for Scientific Diving published by the American Academy of Underwater Scientists. Training Substitutions. Section 30A6 has been revised, requiring proof of certification, such as a diploma and or official transcript, as a commercial working diver from an accredited commercial dive school and other dive-related training certifications, such as chamber operator, saturation diver, etc. These are required as proof of a dive team member's certification and or experience. An ADCI card or similar certification from an internationally recognized commercial diving organization may be substituted as proof of training for divers demonstrating more than five years of diving experience within the six years preceding the beginning of dive operations. Include copies of dive-related training certificates such as tender certification, scuba certification, surface applied air certification, surface supplied mixed gas certification, chamber operation, underwater tools, etc. Training not accepted. Recreational dive certifications are not acceptable. However, their inclusion as dive-related training has never hurt. Minimum diver experience. Dive logs are required to demonstrate that the supervisor and divers have one year of commercial experience. Divers must have four dive logs showing similar decompression and equipment, and one of those logs must be from the prior nine months. Tenders shall demonstrate previous experience and training. This slide presents two changes in the current EM35. Previously, one of the dive logs had to be from the last six months. This has now gone to nine months. Also, tenders are now required to have previous experience in training, whereas the earlier EM385 required one full year of experience for tenders. First aid, CPR, and O2 administration. All dive team members shall have current certifications in first aid, CPR, emergency O2 with training specific to diving, the use of an AED if one is on the dive site. The above training shall be hands-on and not online. Copies of certificates submitted shall have the date of issue and the length of validity. Dive medical. Documentation of diving physicals shall be provided for all divers within the previous 12 months of the dive. The physical shall be performed by a licensed physician and signed by the examining physician. All divers shall be re-examined after any serious diving related injury or illness. Dive inspectors. Contracted diving operations will be monitored or inspected by personnel qualified as USACE dive inspectors. Inspectors shall conduct on-site monitoring during the pre-dive conference, equipment inspection, and the initial dives. Length of monitoring varies on a case-by-case -case basis based on complexity and degree of hazards. Contractor requirements. Contractors are required to submit an accepted safe practice manual dive operations plan, AHA to cover all aspects of a job, emergency management plan, dive personnel qualifications. Requirements will be reviewed and accepted by two of the following, DDC, ADC, or DSR. Note that dive plans should be accepted and never approved as approval of a dive plan may have legal implications if an accident or incident is to occur. Therefore, please ensure to only accept a dive plan. This slide presents revisions to the EM385. Added wording in 30A14C 
to deal with diving in contaminated water. Diving in contaminated water is prohibited for all USACE projects unless supporting documentation is provided that demonstrates that the divers and topside personnel are not exposed to or will be protected from known or potential contamination hazards that would pose a chronic or acute health risk. All divers and topside personnel shall be trained, equipped, and resourced to dive in contaminated water. The dive plan shall be accepted by the GDA within 10 business days prior to dive operations and shall specifically address the areas below in accordance with the U.S. Navy guidance for diving in contaminated waters located at the U.S. Navy C00C3 website. This slide also presents revisions to the EM385 paragraph 30B 6D. If divers are required to perform rigging duties, they must be a qualified rigger and meet the personnel qualifications listed in Section 15B. Section 30B08, Underwater Welding and Burning Operations, Underwater welding and burning shall be limited to surface supply air mode only. Equipment configuration and procedures shall be in accordance with the U.S. Navy Underwater Cutting and Welding Manual. Divers performing underwater welding and burning operations shall be equipped with the following as a minimum. A rubber or neoprene dive suit in good condition that provides electrical insulation to the diver. Insulating gloves with a cuff that, as a minimum, reaches and fully covers the wrist. A welding or burning eye shield attached to the dive helmet with appropriate shade for the conditions and the work area. Scuba operations. Scuba diving operations shall not be conducted at depths greater than 100 feet, outside the no decompression limits, unless recompression chamber requirements are met, against currents greater than one knot, in enclosed or confined spaces, using closed circuit or semi-closed circuit scuba, in visibility less than three feet, unless line tended with diver surface two-way voice communications where pressure differentials exist, or when the diver doesn't have direct access to the surface. Surface Applied Air Operations. SSA operations shall not be conducted at depths greater than 190 feet, or max depth less than 220 feet and the time less than 30 minutes. Exceptional exposure dives are only allowed in life-saving situations. USACE in-house SSA operations are restricted to less than 110 feet unless a waiver is obtained from the DDC and HQ USACE Dive Safety Program Manager approves. Scientific snorkeling. Scientific snorkeling can be conducted on the surface only. No diving, do not leave the surface. It can be used for environmental assessments only, no structural inspections. The safety plan must be accepted by the DDC and must consist of teams of two or more. The team members can be untethered in water depths less than five feet. PFDs are required and other specific requirements exist. Appendix G, manning levels for dive teams. If this applies to you, take the time to review this table. As you can see, the minimum manning level for most diving is four. However, it can increase to eight. In conclusion, we'd like to revisit this earlier slide. For low-risk dives, if the dive team is qualified with certifications, the proper dive logs, and if the team has current certification in first aid, CPR, O2 administration, and if their dive medicals are current.
if their Manning meets Appendix G, and if they're properly equipped with maintenance records, tank certifications, and air certifications, if the dive team has an accepted safe practices manual, and if they have an easily editable template for the dive operations plan, the AHA to cover all aspects of the job, emergency management plan, dive personnel qualifications, and if this template has been edited with adequate attention to this specific job, then the EM385 pre-dive approval process can go quickly, smoothly, and the on-site work should be on track.